All right, uh, great tens. As the heading clearly states, the topic we'll be doing is electric circuits. Okay, this is quite a large topic and quite a um, well tested and examined uh, topic from now up until grade 12. Okay, grade 11 and 12, it gets a little bit more interesting, but here in grade 10, we laid basics, the foundation that we're going to need when we build on it in grade 10 and 11. Okay, so <clears throat> without further ado, let's go ahead and let us begin. Okay, a couple of terms that we do need to familiarize ourselves with uh, is EMF, potential difference, and a voltmeter. Okay, now EMF and uh, potential difference, all right, is used interchangeably, but they are measured by the same thing, which is volts. Okay, so whenever you hear someone talk about the voltage or potential difference or EMF, which actually is a, is a uh, abbreviation for electric motor force, right, it's all measured in the same currency, if you want to call it so, or the same SI unit called volts. All right. Potential difference or voltage, symbol capital V. Okay. Small v, all right, little v represents velocity in physical science or physics. Okay. But capital V represents voltage that is supplied by a battery to a circuit where it is connected is the quantity of energy that the battery transfers to a unit of charge. Now we just come from learning charge the previous week, okay? We learned a couple of formulae there with regards to charge and whatever. Now we've taken it a step further, okay? So charge is still involved, okay? It's still involved here, okay? So read that definition again, I know we can see it, but just to uh, emphasize, potential difference or voltage capital V, supplied by battery to a circuit where it is connected, is the quantity of energy that the battery transfers to a unit of charge. The formula V equals W over Q. W is work done, which is energy in joules, all right? And charge Q we know is measured in coulombs, right? Which we learned last week. The SI unit, which I mentioned at the beginning, or the beginning rather, is V, right? You just write capital V at the end of your value, signals to the marker or whoever is reading it that you are talking about potential difference or voltage. We measure potential difference using a voltmeter, okay? And it's connected in parallel, and we connect it across two points in a circuit, okay? So that's what we do with a voltmeter. A voltmeter, of course, measures voltage, right? It measures potential difference. How much voltage is out? Is the output voltage in the circuit, etc. Okay, what I have here is a little snippet, okay, of how a voltmeter would be connected as well as how it would be drawn, okay? This little element or this little uh, component, right? Don't know, can I do this? Yes, I can. This little component here is a cell. All right, a cell, not a battery. Okay, if we, uh, we all we all know um, AA batteries and um, AAA batteries. Okay, I've got two AAAs in my hand right now. Okay, but one of them is actually a cell. All right, two of them together, two cells make a battery. Okay, so we have one cell over there. Okay, one cell. And we've got a voltmeter that's connected parallel to the circuit. It's not in line with the connecting wire. All right? It's two wires are connected over something, meaning they are parallel to each other. That voltmeter is parallel, parallel to that cell. And this other component that we have here is called a resistor, but we'll get to that in just a momento. Okay, it's called a resistor. Okay. And of course, this symbol with a circle around it, V, represents the volt, the actual volt meter. Cool. Moving on. If we take a little bit of an example here using the formula 
that we just had in our notes there, V equals W over Q, okay? During a thunderstorm, a potential difference of 2 million volts, all right, builds up between the cloud and the ground. Eventually, lightning strikes and a charge of 115 coulombs flows between the ground and the cloud. Calculate the quantity of energy that this lightning flash transfers to its surroundings. Okay, so let's, of course, uh, rather find um, grips with what we have been given. So they told us that the voltage or potential difference all right, was equal to 2 million. 2 million volts and they told us that the charge Q is equal to 115 coulombs and they are looking for W which is the energy okay if I interpret that correctly the quantity of energy that this lightning flash transfers to its surroundings okay so we use our formula V is equal to W divided by Q I'm going to put this into scientific notation, okay, because 2 million is a big number to write down all the time, okay, so I'm going to say 2 times 10 to the power of 6 equals W, because that's 2 million, equals W over 115, okay, I times both sides by 115, they cancel each other out, all right, and, uh, oops, sorry, my bad, we've got to times uh, this whole thing by 115 as well. Let's see if I can fit it in there. There we go. So let's take that times 115. Okay. And we get an answer of, uh, this is quite a big number right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's take... Uh, one, two, three, four. So I have to count this. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I get an answer of two comma three times ten to the power of nine joules is the energy dissipated. All right, after this lightning flash or with this lightning flash of two million volts at one hundred and fifteen coulombs of charge. All right, 2,3 times 10 to the power of 9 joules, okay, which is the energy, the quantity of energy that the lightning flash transfers to its surroundings. Big number, okay, we use big numbers, so we'd have a big number, okay. There's another 9, this comma needs to move 9 spaces after the 3 to get the full number, so it's quite a big number. That was the first one. Okay, the second one. If 5 coulombs of charge transfers 10 joules of energy each, calculate the potential difference. Okay, this is quite basic. Okay, uh, my charge, they said 5 coulombs. And W, they said was 10 joules. And they just want the potential difference. V is equal to W over Q. Uh, 10 divided by 5. Therefore, potential difference or the voltage 10 divided by 5 2 V 2 volts and that's our final answer next concept that we want to introduce is current okay current is electric current is the rate of flow of charge okay which is I is the symbol used for current capital I is equal to the flow of charge or the charge divided by time all right more specifically Q over Delta T okay I couldn't find a triangle so I just put Q divided by T okay so we measure current in amperes or amps for short okay just AMP uh, just AMPS amps or amperes doesn't really matter and we use an ammeter to measure current in a circuit. Okay, we use an ammeter. Okay, and we connect the ammeter in series. As we see here, the ammeter is in series. In other words, it's in the circuit. 
right right off to the cell okay and the direction that the current is flowing is from well you can take it either from uh, the side that way but I take it from the the longer end of the cell to the shorter end so it flows like this all the way through sorry the picture is selecting okay so to write that formula a little bit clearer okay for current okay which we capital symbol I okay is I is equal to the charge divided by time okay hence the rate of flow of charge okay that's all it is okay so I think fitting is to maybe take a little bit of an example during a thunderstorm a lightning flash lasts for 0 0.9 seconds and transfer and transfers 30 coulombs of charge between the cloud and the ground calculate the current that this lightning flash represents okay let's turn this into the first question well we want to calculate the current well we do know that the amount of charge there was 30 amount of time was 0 0.9 seconds and time is in our correct SI unit we don't have to convert it from minutes to seconds right it's in uh, it's in seconds so it's perfect right doesn't it last for just under a second so therefore I is equal to 30 divided by 0 0.9 we get an answer of about 33,33 amps capital A all right that's it answer done for that first example then they say if the current in the circuit so let's take this example here the circuit here so the circuit if the current in the circuit is 1,3 amps calculate how many electrons pass through any point of the circuit in one second okay so electrons passing through any point in one second is basically charge all right so if we say I again is equal to Q divided by um, Delta T okay we got 1,3 amps right in fact we don't even have to write the a when we when we plug in the number into the formula is uh, equal to you see did I miss something one second so it's Q divided by one okay q divided by one so to get rid of the one so therefore the charge is going to be one comma three coulombs i look at the question how many electrons pass through all right do we remember this formula q is equal to n q do you remember that formula okay Let's switch colors quickly from last week so now this is a perfect example of them combining electric circuits with electrostatics okay because they're overlapping to each other so how many so I know I've got the charge is 1 comma 3 all right 1 comma 3 amps and I'm looking for the number the charge in electron 1 comma 6 times 10 to the negative 19 okay divide both sides by 1 comma 6 times 10 to the negative 19 so let's just put this in on my calculator quickly 1 comma 6 times 10 to the negative 19 All right and the number of electrons that pass are about 8 comma 1 2 5 times 10 to the power of 18 with that amount of charge okay that's the amount or how many the number of electrons because they asked how many they didn't ask for what is the charge but we had to use that in this formula uh, question 2 of this little worksheet here question 2 says uh, a 12 volt battery supplies a maximum of 120 joules of energy when charge passes through it calculate the amount of charge passing through the battery okay let's take some time four minutes for this question and then we will mock it okay so a uh, 12 volt battery 120 joules of energy calculate the amount of charge passing through the battery well uh, that's pretty basic 
So uh, with this equation two, we just uh, write down the formula. V is equal to uh, W divided by Q. We just substitute in all these numbers. 12 is equal to 120 uh, divided by Q. Okay, so we need to rearrange this one. So Q cancels out. Q times 12, we need to divide both sides now by 12 to end up with 120 divided by 12 uh, equals Q, or Q equals 120 divided by 12. And we know 120 divided by 12, of course, is 10. So we have 10 coulombs of charge that passes, uh, passing through the battery of a 12 volt battery that's applying 120 joules of energy. Right? 10 coulombs of charge is passing through the battery. The next component of a circuit that we teach in grade 10, or the, one of the main components is, uh, we've looked at current, which is measured in a, by an ammeter. We've looked at voltage, which you know is measured by voltmeter, but the next uh, component is a resistor. Okay, so we're gonna look at a resistor in series first, but we need to understand what a resistor is. First of all, a resistor um, is a device, all right, um, that resists the flow of electric current. Okay, it resists the flow of electric current. Uh, it is used to reduce, or to, it, it is used to reduce the current in a circuit. Okay. Resistors and other such devices are connected in series, okay, as they form the same path, of, in, a part of the same conducting path, okay. Conducting path is when you see a circuit, um, as in the presentation of earlier, uh, let's go to the next one, all this over here, this little square is con basically called conducting wire, and it's if it's placed in a series like this, then it's in the conducting path, as obviously the uh, current would flow through or along this path, rather. Okay, so um, the current in a series is the same uh, across all points of the circuit, okay? So same thing would be for a resistor, okay? A resistor that's connected in series, so if I had yeah, I have a resistor. Yeah, I have another resistor. And yeah, I have a another resistor. It just keeps going. Obviously, R total would be equal to R1, which is this one, plus R2, which is the above one, plus R3. And how depending on how many I have, all up until um, Rn. Okay, it all depends on how many I have in the circuit. Okay, so that's resistor in a circuit, which is just the same thing as how we added up the cells. All right, in that previous question, which was just one and a half plus one and a half plus one and a half. All right, that was it. Okay, nothing to it. Same thing with resistors that are in a series, which is added up straight line. Okay, it's in a straight line. Add it up, one, two, three. Okay. However, it does change, okay, when we are working with a parallel. Okay? So if you work with parallel or resistors in parallel, they look different. Okay? In other words, if I draw them quickly, okay, cool. There's one resistor there, like that comes down, there's another resistor here, okay, okay that wire had to be a little more straight, okay, um, cool, so this is what we call resistors that are connected in parallel, okay, here we have R1, R2, and R3. Okay, resistors and other devices that are connected in parallel if they're connected in what is called separate 
conducting paths. Okay, separate conducting paths to the same battery. So if we have one battery or one battery supplying current for the entire circuit, all the these three are all sup are all um, supplied um, current by the same battery. It's just that they are now in separate conducting paths. So current can go here and there and then there and there. So just separate conducting paths. Okay, that's a parallel uh, resistor. All right, or that's con or that's uh, components such as um, voltmeters connected in parallel as well as a resistor. Okay. Parallel circuits. What are they also called? They are also called current dividers. Okay, current dividers. Okay, the total current in a circuit is the sum of the branch of currents. In other words, the current that's across resistor one plus the uh, the the current of resistor two and three. You can add them all up. Okay, the potential difference. All right, the voltage. All right, the voltage across each device. Okay, in other words, across each resistor in this case. Okay, voltmeter is also connected in parallel. The potential difference across each device is the same. That's why when we connected in, the, in a previous question that we looked at, a uh, cells connected in parallel would have the same voltage because across each and every one of those branches, the voltmeter would read the same amount. Okay. So potential difference or voltage across each resistor or each device is the same. Okay? So in other words, the voltage across resistor 1 would be equal to the voltage across resistor 2, would be equal to the voltage across resistor 3, all the way through to however many resistors we had. All right. If one device, if one resistor if, or if these were light bulbs, which can also be connected in parallel, if one light bulb was removed or went out or blew out, the others would work unaffected. Okay, it would be controlled by its own switch, almost. All right, because the current has got more uh, branches or conducting paths to go down. So if this was blown, if this went out, current could still go to this one and continue going to this one. Okay. The what is known as total equivalent. I uh, always get stuck with spelling this word. Total equ. Uh, that that's why. Equivalent um, resistance for the re for the type of circuit that we had previously, where all the resistors would be in parallel, is calculated as follows: one over R. P, one over R parallel, right? Sometimes they do say um, one over R and they draw parallel lines there. Doesn't matter which one you use. Okay, I use RP. Is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over Rn. In other words, this means it doesn't matter how many resistors you have, you just keep going like this. Okay, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 if you have two resistors in parallel. If you have three, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 will basically give you um, the total equivalent resistors. Okay, when there are only two resistors in parallel, we can calculate them as follows. So, if there are only two resistors, okay, if there's three or four, we use this method. Okay. It can be used for two or more, okay? But this one is when there are only two resistors, we use this formula. R parallel is equal to resistor one times resistor two all over resistor one plus resistor two. And that would give us the um, resistance in parallel value for both of those resistors. Okay, when we're using this formula over here, so I just want to cordon off this uh, formula. When we're using this formula, we'll get 1 over R 
uh, parallel is equal to, of course, whatever this is, 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2, okay? And then we'd have to flip it on its side, all right? We call it the reciprocal, okay? So therefore, if we use an example, 1 over r parallel is equal to 1 over 3, because maybe the resistor 1 was 3 ohms, plus 1 over 5, because resistor 2 was 5 ohms, okay? Then we just plug that in on our calculator, 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5, we'd get 1 over r parallel to equal 8 over 15, and we'd have to switch these over, okay, interchangeably uh, around, and therefore r parallel would equal to uh, 15 over 8 okay and you can obviously simplify that uh, sorry give me a minute simplify that into basically 1,88 ohms okay we do use um, ohms all right symbol line looks almost like a light bulb all right um, as the SI unit for resistance Okay, resistance is measured in ohms. Okay, standard across no matter what you're doing. All right. Let's move on to question number three, okay, since we've learned about resistance. When three cells are connected in series, the total EMF of the battery is 24 volts. Two resistors are connected in parallel with switches S1 and S2. Okay, that symbol over there illustrates the switch, as shown in the diagram below, and they are connected to the battery. An ammeter reads the current passing through the battery, and voltmeter reads the potential difference, excuse me, across the 6 ohm resistor. The cells and the ammeter have negligible resistance, in other words, they, can, they are so small they can be ignored. The voltmeter has a very high resistance. 3.1. Calculate the EMF or the potential difference of each cell. Determine the reading on the voltmeter when the switch S is open. And then, uh, which switch S1, sorry, is open. Then determine the voltmeter reading when S1 is closed. Determine the reading on the voltmeter when S1 and 2 are closed and then calculate the equivalent resistance of the two resistors in parallel. We can use our resistance formula that we just learned. And then the reading on the ammeter when the switches S1 and S2 are closed. Now this might be slightly challenging, it's okay. Take your time, pace yourself girls, and because we have more than enough time to understand this question, okay? So take your time everybody. Uh, let's pause the video and then we'll have some time to work on it and we'll come back and we'll look at the solutions all right so solution time uh for these two uh two mark question here 3.1 all the way through 3.4 um the on memo answers for this so we're just going to go have a look at the answers because they one mark each two mark uh so uh, for 3.5 we'll obviously go through the solutions in more detail and uh, as well as uh, 3.6 we'll also go through the solution um in more detail Okay, so don't worry much about that. Um, cool. Okay, uh, 3.1 was uh, the EMF of each cell. So we had the total EMF, which was 24 volts. And all we did was take the total of e total EMF divided by the number of cells. And we got 23 divided by, 24 divided by 3 gave us 8 volts. 3.2 was determine the reading on the voltmeter when switch S1 is open. Now I've got a question about this earlier, as that first of all we can see that the switch when it's closed it connects the conducting path. Okay, there is a break in the conducting path right now. Okay, so the only thing that the voltmeter can pick up is what it is in parallel to. It's connected across the 6 ohm resistor, but it's in kind of parallel to the cell. Okay, and so therefore, the voltmeter reading when S1 is open is going to be 24 volts. Okay, so it only picks up the EMF, EMF 
of the battery. Okay. It's the same reading when it's closed. All right, the exactly the same reading. All right, that's all. all. Right, it's exactly the same reading when it is closed. Okay, and uh, when switch S one and S two are closed, remember with the voltmeter it reads the same across a parallel circuit. So the six ohm resistor is in parallel to the twelve ohm resistor. What does that mean? They are in parallel to each other. So voltmeters connected across the six ohm resistor. That means it's the same output volts for the six and twelve. So it reads twenty four volts. It reads the same. That's it. Okay. Twenty four was the answer for three point two all the way through to three point four. Twenty four volts. So you got that all correct. And 3.1, of course, we saw 24 divided by 3, 8 volts each for each cell. 3.5 was calculate the equivalent resistance of the two resistors in parallel. Okay, so let's do that on a new uh, sh uh, black sheet here, 3.5. So we, I'm going to use the formula, formula RP or R parallel is equal to R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Okay, so uh, we had R1 was equal to 6 ohms. I'm going to take that as my R1 and R2 was equal to 12 ohms. Okay, so if I do that, okay, uh, I've got 6 times 12 all over 6 plus 12. Okay, 6 times 12, 12 times 6, 72. And um, 6 plus 12 is 18. So I'll plug that into my calculator. Ah, put it on first, that'll help. And, um, okay, I get an answer of 4 ohms. R parallel is equal to 4 ohms. All right, let me write my ohms a little bit better there. It looks just absolutely terrible. Okay, 4 ohms. Much better. Now, 3.6 is an interesting question because this is going to test your true understanding. It says calculate the reading on the amateur when switches S1 and S2 are closed. Okay, now the EMF, which is equal to the to the reading on the voltmeter, 24 volts. R parallel is equal to what? 4 ohms. Okay? And we want to test the current. Okay? What's the current in the circuit? Okay? Now there is a new formula that we're going to introduce. Okay, there's a new formula that we're going to introduce, all right, called current, all right, is equal to V divided by R, okay, V divided by R. Very seldom do we have this formula, as this is mostly taught in grade 11, all right, but I think it's coming back into the syllabus now in grade 10, okay. It uh, basically explains resistance is measured in ohms, it basically explains a component of what is known as Ohm's law. Right? Ohm's law. Okay? Once you know one formula, you can manipulate the formula to calculate anything else that you need. We're looking for the current. We know the voltage was 24, and we know, of course, that the resistance of the parallel circuit was 4. 24 divided by 4 gives us a current of 6 amps or 6 amperes right amperes okay so that is the current in the circuit when switches s1 and s2 are closed and that concludes my presentation for this week uh, grade 10s on electric circuits please stay tuned for next week we will, we will continue the topic of electric circuits and get some more practice in